In this video, we want to use properties of determinants to evaluate the following determinants. So there's two problems there, and you can attempt these on your own. Pause the video and see if you can do these. It's basically three problems. So see what you can do with these. And again, no calculators allowed. And it should be fairly easy if you apply the uh, properties. So go ahead and try it. Try them and I'll be back. Okay, let's look at these. Let's just look as an example first, just to review. Let me go through some of the properties, the main ones anyway. And then if you want to stop the video again and try them, you can go ahead and do it. But if we look at a, a two by two matrix here. And of course the determinant of that matrix is written with the bars this way. So this is evaluated by cross multiplying A times D here. minus the, the other cross product BC. And then of course you combine those values that would give you the answer. It's pretty straightforward. So let's look at an example. Let's start with the determinant has components. First row is 1, 3. Second row is 4, 5. And then we cross multiply 1 times 5 is 5. And the other way we subtract the other cross product, 3 times 4 is 12. 5 minus 12 is negative 7. Okay, that's your basic calculation for a 2 by 2. But now notice, if I add a multiple of the first row to the second row, so let's say number in the second row multiplied by negative 4 and then add that product to the second row. So negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Add it to 4 gives me 0. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Add it to 5 is a negative 7. Now let's evaluate this determinant. Cross multiply we get negative 7. Subtract the other cross product. That's 3 times 0 is 0. So this gives me 0. So this, this is telling me then that if I multiply a row of a determinant and add that product to another row, corresponding elements, the value of the determinant is unchanged. Still get the same number. Or if I multiply a column, take a multiple of one column and add those corresponding products to another column, that value doesn't change. Okay, so that's one, one property. Notice I look at something like this. I do the cross product here. Of course, I'm going to get 0 minus 0. The value of this is 0. So I can generalize this really. Uh, if I have any determinant, it doesn't matter what, what dimension. Uh, uh, it could be a 2 by 2, like this here. It could be a 3 by 3, 4 by 4. Remember, determinants have to be square. The number of rows and columns has to be the same in order to have a determinant associated with that expression. So if you have a 3x3 three three determinant or a 4x4 four four or n by n and all the elements in one row or column are, are all zero, the answer is going to be zero. Because the way we evaluate a determinant, if we don't use the properties, is we take the elements of any row or column and multiply it by the corresponding cofactor minor of that uh, element or that number and you add them up. Now let's look at another thing here. Let's suppose I have this then. See I have the determinant 4, 5, 1, 3. In other words I took the first determinant, this one right here, and I interchanged the rows row 1 and row 2. 
and then I evaluate 4 times 3 is 12 1 times 5 is 5 so if I make that subtraction I get 7 over here I get negative 7 that's another property it works for any dimension as long as it's a square 2 by 2 3 by 3 4 by 4 and so on if you take any determinant and interchange two rows or interchange any two columns and evaluate the sign changes so over here I see I got a negative 7 here I get a positive there's other properties but those those are those are the main properties so you want to pause the video again and try them using some of those properties. Go ahead. Okay, let's take the first one then. And let's try to solve this one. Find the value of this determinant. Now I could just go ahead and, and take the first row and then eliminate the uh, elements of the first row and the first column. And then I would have this determinant. This would be a cofactor. And then I would take the next one and multiply it by its cofactor. Eliminate the row and the column, and that would be this component, this component, and so on. And then the six, this way, eliminate the row and the column. Whatever's left is the uh, the cofactor. I would find the value of that two by two determinant multiplied by the uh, number in that particular column, in that particular row. Add them up, and that would give me the answer. That's the reason that if all all the numbers in a row or a column are zero. The answer is going to be zero because you're going to be taking those components and multiplying by the cofactor. But if it's a zero, it's all going to be zero. So now what I'll do with this first one is I'm going to I'm going to apply one of the properties instead of doing it the long way here. I'm going to add the second row to the first row. Because notice I have a negative two here and a two here, a six here, a negative six here. So negative one and three will give me a two. 2 and negative 2 would be 0, so that becomes 0. Negative 6 and 6 is 0. We get that. Then everything stays the same. So the second row is still going to be negative 1, 2, negative 6. And this is going to be 2, 1, and 5. So when you evaluate then a 3x3 three three is a little bit more involved than a 2x2, two two. you take, you pick any row or any column and then you take the components of that row or column and multiply by its cofactor and then add them up. So that's why you want to pick the row or column that has the most zeros. That's why I generated the zeros here using the properties of determinants. So now I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take the first row that has the two zeros there, bring down the two. And then I eliminate the row, the column, whatever's left is the cofactor. So I put the 2 and the negative 6. And then the 1 and the 5. And then this is, this is either multiplied by a positive 1 or a negative 1, depending on the position. So if it's in the 1, 1 position or first row, first column, you add those positions up. 1 and 1 is 2. If it's even, it's going to be a positive 1. Because what you're doing is multiplying by negative 1 to that power. So in the next one, it's going to change. If I had a number, an actual number here other than 0, then it would be first row, second column. So I would be 3. So the next setup would have a negative there. This one, though, is just a positive. Now here I don't have to do that because 0 times the cofactor will be 0. 0 times the cofactor will be 0. So the answer I get from here will be the value of this determinant. So let's say this is going to equal 2. And this we have 2 here. And we cross multiply here. 2 times 5 would be 10. And then cross multiply here. That's a negative 6. But we're subtracting that product. Remember, so negative 6. We subtract it becomes a plus 6. So 10 and 6 is 16 multiplied by 2. The value of that determinant is 32. So 
this has a value of 32. Then we look at the next one. Number two, it's a four by four. We want to find the value of this one. It has one zero. So if I wasn't using the property of determinants, I would either use the first row or the third column to evaluate because that's the, that's the only place I have a zero. But some of the properties that we have are this. We mentioned if you have a row or a column, they're identical. The value of the determinant is zero. Or if you have one row or one column that's a multiple of another row or column, the value of the determinant is zero. So here you look at this first column and the fourth column. Notice the components, corresponding components are multiples. I multiply the first column by three. Three times two is six. Three times negative three is negative nine. Three times five is 15. Three times one is three. So think about it. If I were to multiply the first column by negative three and add it to the fourth column, I would get all zeros in that fourth column. So whenever you have two columns that are multiples of each other, or two rows that are multiples of each other, the value of the determinant is zero. So this one is zero. So for number one, we have a value of 32. Number two, value of zero. And for this one, you're given that the value of this three by three is 305. So if I were to expand this without using the properties, it would take me a while because there's no zeros involved. But what I would try to do is what I did in number one, is try to generate some zeros just to make the calculations easier. But in this case, what uh, you're supposed to do is use, pro use a property of determining. If you know the value of this one to be 305, what's the value of this one? Well, again, take a, take a closer look at the two. And you notice that I have a first row is 1, negative 2, 5. And that 1, negative 2, 5 becomes the second row in this one. And 6, 9, 4 here becomes the component side of the first row. And the third row stays the same. Negative 4, 6, negative 3. So all we did is we interchanged two rows. When you interchange two rows, the value of the determinant changes in sign only. So if this is 305, then we know by the property that we talked about earlier, this should be negative 305. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.